Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and we've heard a lot about watchOS 10 this past week, what to expect with that, iOS 17, iPhone 15, and also new hardware expected at WWDC. This is your news update for the week of May 1st, 2023. Now, Apple's next earnings call is just a few days away on May 4th. You can listen in on their website. I'll link it in the description, but you'll see it says Apple Financial Results Q2 2023. Join us here on May 4th. It's 5 p.m. Eastern Time or 2 p.m. Pacific Time. So if you want to listen in, they don't typically talk about sales numbers in general, but talk about profit and loss. Now, WWDC is just five weeks away. That means in five weeks from today, we should see iOS 17 and more. I can't believe we're only that far away, but at this point, we should have it in just five weeks. We'll have it on June 5th, where we'll see all of the new features we'll talk about in a moment. Now, we've been waiting for Apple CarPlay to be updated for a long time. Apple initially introduced Apple CarPlay on their iOS 16 website and on their iOS 16 website, you can see it says next generation of CarPlay where it would be fully integrated into a vehicle. It looks like Lincoln may be implementing some of this with their next vehicle, 2024 Lincoln Nautilus, the actual interior, the screens and everything else look very familiar as far as Apple goes, but we'll have to see if it's actually Apple or something proprietary as it does support both iPhone and Android auto. So CarPlay and Android auto, but either way, we we should start to see this roll out into different vehicles this year, whether that's Mercedes, Porsche, and others. So hopefully we start to see that as well as a new interface overall. Now there's also a new store opening soon, Apple's Tyson Corner store, where they're actually moving it. This was the original Apple store, and they've put a new little graphic there that you can check out, and it says a new chapter is coming soon. So this is currently open it seems, but they're going to be moving it very soon. And also basic Apple guy provided some wallpapers with the new logo style there. So I'll link those in the description. If you want to check them out, I've been to that Apple store. And if you have, let me know in the comments below, hopefully we'll see a fully redesign that they'll carry across to different stores around the world. Now, Apple card savings account has been out for a little bit now, and they've started to make their first interest payment. So if you go into your wallet and you have that set up, you can see here, I only have about $11 in there, but they made an interest payment of one cent. So it's starting to pay interest. Of course, if I had much more, this would be a higher number, but it seems like they're starting to pay out already. And that seems to be sooner than I would have expected. But either way, if this is available where you live, you should see this starting to be paid out. I saw others that posted the same thing. There's new Mac OS malware that can steal sensitive information on your Mac. I wanted to make you aware just to give you a few different tips on preventing that sort of thing from being installed as a new user on Telegram was selling access to it so it could be exploited. It's actually activated by launching a DMG file, which is similar to an EXE file sort of on a Windows computer. You want to avoid opening files from people you didn't expect anything from. So if you're not familiar with someone sending you a different file to open, don't open that up. Make sure if you are getting an attachment from someone, they've actually told you this ahead of time. Otherwise, I never open attachments as a security precaution. Now, fake AirPods have been something I've been hearing more and more about, especially when there's a new AirPod firmware update. Usually the user finds out that the AirPods are fake or not genuine, and instead they won't update and that's how they know. So they may not have purchased them directly from Apple and then they won't update and then you find out they're not genuine. So the U S customs and border protection office recently seized over a thousand sets of fake AirPods at the Washington Dulles international airport in March, about $290,000 worth. So there's a lot of people selling these out there. If you are picking these up, make sure that you buy them directly from apple.com or Apple actually has a site on Amazon. That's their own store. Don't buy them from a third party unless maybe it's a local store that sells Apple products such as best buy or something else. Now, on a positive note, the new emergency SOS via satellite feature introduced with iPhone 14 models recently helped save some students who were in Utah exploring a canyon when they got stuck and had no cell signal. Every 20 minutes or so, they were able to get a signal and then use emergency SOS to actually locate a satellite and then send a message asking for help. So this is something that could definitely be helpful if you're in an area without any signal, you go hiking often and you need to connect and then actually text someone asking for help. So this is a great feature to have. Thankfully, I haven't had to use it, but if you have, I'd love to hear your story in the comments below. Now this week, I wanted to mention a few different deals, not just the AirPods deal we have every week, but there's some great deals on things such as the iPad mini, as well as other iPads. So the iPad mini sits 
six is up to $170 off on Amazon being sold directly by Apple. Also, the standard iPad is down to 269. I'll link those in the description. If you'd like to check them out, of course, the AirPods seem to be perpetually on sale from Apple on Amazon. So make sure again, that you're purchasing them directly from Apple, not on some third party site. They actually have their own store on Amazon's website. Again, I'll link those in the description if you want to check it out. Now, Apple released a new update today, their first iOS security response update for iOS 16.4.1. You can see it here, iOS security response 16.4.1a. This will only show up if you're on 16.4.1. It will not show up if you're on 16.5 betas. So once you see this, you can install it. And if you tap install now, at the time of this video, it fails over and over. I'm seeing this all over the internet. This is available for iPhone and iPad, as well as Mac. Mac OS. It seems to work on Mac OS, but it gives an error on iOS and iPad OS where it says the security response 16.4.1 a failed verification because you are no longer connected to the internet. I'm connected, whether you're using Wi-Fi or cellular, it doesn't seem to make a difference. So just keep that in mind. But again, you won't have this if you're on the betas of 16.5, but hopefully they resolve this soon. And if you want me to do a separate video about this, let me know in the comments below. Now, iOS 16.5 beta four or possibly release candidate or RC should be available this week. Typically after beta three, we move to a weekly schedule. This is subject to change. Last time we had a two week wait between those updates, but typically we should see it on Tuesday or Wednesday. Now that we've had beta three, then beta four or release candidate with a final release, probably in mid May or the end of May, depending on if we get a new beta or a release candidate. So if we see beta four tomorrow or Wednesday, then probably a release candidate the following week with the final sometime in the middle or end of May, then we'll move on to iOS 16.6. That's typically what Apple does every time. Now also iOS 17, we've heard more and more about. We heard last week that the wallet app would actually get a redesign in iOS 17. And the wallet app seems to look like this, according to analyst 941 on Twitter, who shared a mock-up of it. So you can see it looks a little bit different, maybe a little easier to use. They also leaked what the health app would look like in the favorites section. So that's said to get a redesign as well as what the lock screen wallpaper section would look like supposedly. So lots of updates there where it looks like we'll have different customizations and small refinements as many people have been stating. So it could look like that could be slightly different, but it gives you a general idea of what to expect. Now, iPad OS 17 is set to get some really impressive updates as well. Now, iPads are set to get lock screen customizations, and this is something I know a lot of you have been asking about. Apparently, there could be widgets and more. I would like to see widgets and photo album modes, but there could be some customization. So if you have this on a stand, it could just sit there and go through different information at a glance until you need to use it. Apple is also said to be working on a dedicated feature set for larger iPads that we would see in 2024, according to the same leaker 941 on Twitter. This would allow for the 14.1 inch or larger iPads to have different features with an M3 chipset. Also, iPad OS 17 is expected to get a resizable dock, similar to what we have on Mac, as well as additional support for webcams when using an external monitor. So we should see some other nice things with that, with the ability to stream multiple audio and video sources at once with Stage Manager, and also iPad could sleep the display when you're connected to an external monitor to use it sort of as a Mac clamshell mode when you don't want to use this display, but want to use it sort of as a computer by itself. So all of those things could be coming with iPad OS 17 and they seem to be from fairly reliable sources. But again, we'll have to wait and see it in a month or so. Now we've heard a lot about watch OS 10 this week, and some of these come from Mark Gurman and some others. And the big focus is said to be a whole redesign of the UI widgets are set to be a big focus this year with a new interface. That's something similar to glances that were part of early Apple watch designs. Mark Gurman also said that the interface is more similar to what we had with the Siri watch face from watch OS four, which would be combined with widgets that allow you to scroll through things such as weather stocks, activity, calendar, and so on. Instead of having to go into an app and then launch it every time you would actually just have widgets. You could scroll through quickly at a glance. 
this is a change to sort of move away from what we've had with sort of an iPhone interface on the Apple watch and make something that's more watch specific instead with better functionality. So that will be updated apparently with its biggest update ever with watch OS 10. I'm looking forward to that. I don't really get a ton of use out of this. I use it for maybe going for a walk and a watch and occasionally texting. Otherwise it's just a watch. So bringing added functionality with ease of use is something I definitely welcome. Now, iPhone 15 is expected to have that action button like I've talked about for a few weeks. Instead of having this silent switch, we would have an action button where we could press it and then customize it like we can on Apple Watch Ultra. That makes a lot of sense. I think it would be great to have custom functions, maybe shortcut ability or whatever we program it to. I think that would be great. Also, iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max are expected to have smaller camera bumps than originally thought. Originally, it was shown to be huge based on different renders. Now it looks like it will sink down into the body more and not really grow from what we have currently. So, of course, we'll have to wait to see the final dimensions, but typically Apple changes the cameras. But if they keep them the same and make the overall thickness of the device greater, we could see a more flat camera bump as well. Either way, I would like to see him make this thicker, add a bigger battery, and just have it flat overall. Let me know what you think about that, though. Mark Gurman recently said to expect the new 15-inch MacBook Air to be announced at WWDC. This was thought maybe it could come before WWDC or after, and it will come with an M2 processor, be very similar to what we have with this one, hopefully with a midnight color that's less fingerprint prone. But either way, this is a great device. A larger screen with maybe a little bit more power would be welcome. It's expected to have M2, not M3, but either way, this is a great device. You can fully edit 4K video on it without a problem. So hopefully we see something very similar, but just a little bit larger and hopefully not too expensive. Now, Apple Watch's next update for the Apple Watch Ultra was originally expected to get a new display technology with micro LED. That's sort of the future of displays beyond OLED, and Ross Young has now said that that's been pushed back on the Apple Watch to 2025 at the earliest. So that explains why maybe we'll see OLEDs in the iPad before micro LED, as the technology may not be ready for mass production. We have seen it from different manufacturers, such as Samsung, on different televisions, but we don't really see it out in the wild regularly as it's very expensive. So maybe it just needs a little bit more time. Now also the mixed reality headset of course is expected to be at WWDC and be sort of the next big thing. That will be shown on June 5th of course and according to the economic daily news in Taiwan, Apple is in the final sprint and supply chain delivery stage, meaning we could see it earlier than we expect. So we could see that fairly soon, but I would expect them to show it at WWDC and then release it later in the year, giving developers time to actually make different applications for it. So I'm really curious to see what they have that would make it different than an Oculus. I'm still a bit skeptical on that, and I hope it's something that we don't expect, like when they introduce the iPhone, but I'm not sure what else they could do. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. And that's everything this week. Lots of news about upcoming versions of iOS, watchOS, and more. Look for iOS 16.5 beta 4 or release candidate very soon. And let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover in these weekly news updates. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, it will be linked in the description as it normally is. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>